I'm Daphne Good at the home of Pauline and Dave Thompson in Lake Cowichan, and we think you will be inspired today. We have a wonderful group of artists who are ready to share and tell you all about the show, which is coming up on the May long weekend. Thanks for watching. Go Island, Cowichan Valley. On today's show, a quick trip to Cowichan Bay. And then, jewelry, painting, glass etching, and woodwork. A lot more as well on Go Island, Cowichan Valley. The Cats Art Group Show and Sale is coming up on the May long weekend. It's been going for decades and I have Loretta Puckrin with me. We're going to show you some work in progress and we're also going to be featuring a number of the other artists. Loretta, this group has been working for decades and it's really neat to me that you include all kinds of different mediums and different age groups uh, within your group. Basically, we're a collective of people who like to create. And the medium that you work in isn't important, it's that you keep on creating. And a lot of people, they work on their own and they find that they lose the initiative. Uh, so with a group to keep you stimulated, it right. works out very well. Yes, we all need a little motivation, don't we, at times? <laughs> we to make sure we have fun. Yes. Now you do encaustic. Can you give us a bit of a description while you actually create something with this, uh, with this torch? Certainly. Encaustic is one of the oldest art forms. The only thing that's an older art form are cave paintings. Wow. So we're talking about BC here. <laughs> and basically it's pigments encapsulated in wax. Fascinating. You have to be a bit of a pyromaniac with yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, I can torch here. Okay. And I see all kinds of wax crayons over here as well with the supplies. Well, uh, they're a little bit more sophisticated than wax crayons because wax crayons <laughs> aren't permanent. I mean, you can do it, but then it will, it fades. Well, the good thing is you also teach art, so you're already teaching me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so basically, we're painting with flame. You want to melt the wax and then incorporate it into the background. Now normally when I'm working I have a whole palette on a hot plate that I work with. But you can see how the, the wax melts. Yeah. I'm just getting rid of the ridges here. And it all blends in together quite nicely. You know, I, uh, I can see that, that it's very malleable. You can do all kinds of things with encaustic. Now, how on earth did you find out about this form of art? Oh, I had a teacher at the University of Alberta who wanted to learn about it, so she got a class together, and there were 10 of us, and uh, we just had a great time playing the whole weekend. And it's one of those things you either love it or you don't, uh -huh. and if you love it, you just can't stop doing it. It seems like it would be quite relaxing. I'm just watching you and and seeing the process and looks like it could be really fun because it doesn't look like an exact science, that's for sure. Uh, you can make it exact, but I'm not an exact type of an artist. I don't like photorealism. I like letting the medium play. Right. Well, this is fascinating. So what would you, how, how would you name this when you're all finished with it and you put it up for sale? This particular piece is a Scuts Falls. And we can see the, the water coming down here in the falls with the trees and the river coming down. Yes, and so, of course that's a nice neighboring spot. Lots of people will recognize Scott's yeah. Falls from this area. Nice colors. Is it difficult to find the materials? <sighs> Expensive. Oh, uh, okay. Hmm. But you can make your own too. You can get powdered pigments and, and make your own waxes, right. which I do most of the time. Well, I'm really happy you gave us a bit of a demonstration. Thank you very much. And, and I do want to ask you about your teaching. I know that you teach and, and you've also done paintings. You work in fiber. It sounds to me like you like a lot of variety. <laughs> I do, I do. And, and with the art group, we have monthly challenges. So when someone says, okay, take a Rorschach ink blot and make something out of it, there's only so many mediums it works. Yeah. So we're encouraged to try different mediums and, and to find different forms of expression. Right. Now the Cats Art Group show and sale happens on the May long weekend, Friday night, Saturday and Sunday at the Upper Centennial Hall. I'm sure it's pretty popular because it's been going for what, 40 odd years? Yep, it has been. We even have a group that comes Sunday afternoon for a discussion of the artwork. Right. And they're all students of art. 
Yes. It's a lot of fun. We like sharing our enthusiasm. Well, I love that because if you've never done art before, you can learn. And uh, Loretta is one of the teachers. It must be lots of fun. And in the area of Lake Cowichan, do you find budding talent all the time? All over the place. And it's not just in Lake Cowichan. I feel art is and creation is something everybody has to do. We just have to give ourselves permission to play. I love that. Well, you've really inspired me and I hope all of you at home as well. We're going to have a look at some more of Loretta's work. You've got what to show us? Painting? Uh, oil, acrylic, pastel, fiber arts, wood. Fabulous. So we like doing a lot of different things. I could see that. Well, let's have a look. You can enjoy a wide variety of artwork at the Katza Art Group annual show and sale. It happens on the long weekend in May, Friday from 6 until 9 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Upper Centennial Hall in Lake Cowichan. Another one of our very talented artists in the Katza Art Group is Dave Thompson, who's standing beside me. A purpose-built facility. Are you lucky? You've got a whole wonderful workshop here, Dave. And a finished piece. Let's start with talking about this. As soon as I look at it, I think, oh my gosh, hours of work, I'm sure, to create this. Yeah, it's quite a few hours. There's, oh, all told, there's maybe uh, 12, 14 hours. Oh, it's just gorgeous. And how many kinds of wood and what are they? There's three in there. There's the, this is a maple, mm -hmm. walnut, and this one is a yew wood. It's very, very pretty. You know what I think is incredibly inspiring, Dave, is that you are self-taught and you've only been doing this about nine years. About that, yes. So how did you learn? Oh, I get a magazine and I'm looking through the magazine and I'll see a bowl similar to this and I see it and I'm like, oh geez, I gotta make that. I could do that. <laughs> so I, I come out and do it. Good for you. Now here's something in the works. Is this all going to come together in one this piece? This will come together in one piece. Like here you can see the base mm -hmm. and here's the base. Mm -hmm. And then this one will get glued on top of that. And this one on top of that. Like this one here. Mm -hmm. This one here, and there will be two more bigger ones. Right. And they're all glued together. Yeah. And once it's glued together, you put it up on the lathe and turn it, and you finish up with something like this. So you're fascinated with all these bits coming together. It, it seems like that's your specialty, right? Yes, yes. And why is that? Why, why does this fascinate you particularly? Instead of, you know, one piece in one color. It's nitty little pieces, which I like, and I like kind yeah. of perfection. I haven't quite got perfection yet. Oh, I can see you like perfection. Were you always like that in the rest of your life? Yes, <laughs> always. <laughs> well, this is a wonderful way to spend hours. Is it? Is it somewhat calming when you're working with wood? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I'll come out here at 8 o'clock in the morning and my wife will say lunch at 12 and uh, 3 o'clock she calls and says lunch is over. <laughs> That's okay. And then she'll call about 6 and say dinner's ready. And I don't want to go over and have dinner. Well, what a wonderful way to spend time and have a lovely hobby. The only time that... I want to have dinner is when things like this happen. Oh, uh, yes. We have a little bit of a casualty. This was a bowl, and I was putting the finishing touches to it. And there's a chuck that holds this in, in the lathe, and I hadn't got it quite tight enough, and it let loose. Uh. So now that is sort of garbage. <laughs> So is it inspiring you? You have it hanging around here just to remind you of what not to do next <laughs> no, time? <laughs> it just hasn't gone in the burn pile yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's wonderful to visit with you, Dave. Thanks for showing us. We're also going to have a look at your other work because in your spare time, when you're not putting little pieces of wood together to make wonderful decorative items, you're a watercolor artist. I watercolor oil and acrylics and egg tempera. Wow. And now I've started to do 3D birds. Oh, beautiful. 
we're going to look at some of the 3D creatures that you've captured in wood and uh, show a selection of your other artwork right now and remind people that the Katza Art Show and Sale is coming up on the May long weekend at Centennial Upper Hall. Thanks, Dave. Well, we talk about diversity, and it definitely is part of the Katza Art Group. I have Carola Shabernak with me, who does chain mail, jewelry, Ukrainian eggs, and Sumi E. I think that covers a big gamut. Carola, when did you start with your artwork? I started with my artwork way back in 1974 when I went to art school, but I didn't really pick it up until much later um, in the early 1990s and into present day. And it must be very satisfying for you. It is. I really uh, enjoy the creati creative aspect of doing the art and um, the jewelry as well. Lovely. Well, tell us about Sumi E. Well, this particular piece up here is a Japanese Sumi E, and it is done in a Western style, which means that I don't use the traditional rice paper that the Japanese would use. I use Western watercolor papers, and I often put in backgrounds, which is also something the Japanese don't normally do. So I've taken it in a Western direction. Mm -hmm. And all of the pieces of Sumi E feature flowers. Is that traditional? Uh, it is quite traditional. Um, I do other work as well. Unfortunately, well, fortunately for myself, they have sold. So, <laughs> but I can't show them to you for that reason. Right. Well, that makes sense. Lovely colors, and they're also delicate. Well, thank you very much. Um, these particular ones over here are flowers again. I have done koi, which is also a, a great um, Asian sort of motif. And um, yeah, so this one is with a white background, which is more traditional, but again, no rice paper, which makes it easier for me to actually frame them. It's a whole different technique if you're doing, doing rice paper. More of Carola's work is behind us. Now, what's this medium? Uh, this is Conte Crayon, which is an ancient technique um, used by people like Michelangelo would take a Conte Crayon to get the sepia tones in these particular types of paintings, or actually they're drawings more than paintings. I also use black ink to emphasize as well, which uh, takes it in a different direction again. And I can tell you've spent time around horses because you've got those fine muscle features. Yes, I have spent some time around horses. I had a friend who had horses and um, maybe 10 years I spent around horses. Very nice. Well, that's just a beautiful piece. What will you have in the show and sale? I will have Japanese sumi e. I'll have watercolors. I will have some Conte crayon. I will also have uh, jewelry and items of uh, silver as well. Well, a little embellishment is lovely in the form of jewelry, and that's what we're going to have a look at next. It is absolutely fabulous to have uh, really well-crafted jewelry made on Vancouver Island. This is what we have with Corolla's work. Perhaps we could have you describe this uh, set here. This particular set here is uh, certain items are on jewelry wire that would include the pearls and the amethyst and these pieces left and right. This particular piece is sterling plate, no, it's not sterling plated, it is sterling sheet which is cut to size around the individual stones and the dog bone chain is also handmade. This entire piece is handmade. It is absolutely gorgeous and so unique and different with these gemstones, very different shapes, very intricate work, Corolla. And, and you've also got chain mail, which is quite unusual. Chain mail, um, the oldest piece of chain mail that they've excavated is 2,500 years old and it's a Celtic piece. Uh, the European foreign one, which is this particular piece over here, is the type of chain mail that the knights used to wear as armor, only it was obviously much larger and riveted into um, sections and plate. Mm -hmm. So then anyway, we also have a Persian chain. This is a full Persian. It's also called foxtail. Many of them have more than one name. All of these items are made by hand. I use uh, sterling wire 
and um, from the wire I wind it on a mandrel. I cut the coils with a circular saw, a tiny circular saw, and then each ring is hand placed deliberately to create a chain with jewelry pliers that I use. So that is something really unique and different that probably wouldn't be appearing anywhere else on Vancouver Island. So if you want to see more, be sure to go to the Katza show and sale on the May Long weekend. And we see quite a wide variety of jewelry like you never stop. No, I really enjoy it. It's quite meditative once you learn how to do each particular pattern of which there are dozens and dozens of patterns. And I I am basically self-taught. I took one course in the Byzantine chain and after that I just uh, read books and um, got information off the internet in order to learn how to do other patterns. Quite incredible. Well, we also see some very traditional Ukrainian Easter eggs, a very large goose egg here with those beautiful intricate patterns. Yeah, the Pisanki is its traditional name. They are Ukrainian Easter eggs and um, they are meant to be given away as gifts to people whom we love and um, that's the traditional method. Uh, most of them are highly symbolic. The colors are symbolic and also the different kinds of designs on them are also symbolic. You can enjoy a wide variety of artwork at the Katza Art Group annual show and sale. It happens on the long weekend in May, Friday from 6 until 9 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Upper Centennial Hall in Lake Cowichan. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, Paul Bilestein forces himself to make a detour en route to Duncan every time he can. And you should, too. You've probably gathered that we are featuring some very artistic people today and it's a real pleasure to tell you about the Katza Art Group. And with me is Pauline Thompson with some more beautiful art. This is etching on glass. Uh, Pauline, it looks like you have a lot of functional as well as decorative wear. So what's this process? For this, um, I've drawn out the pattern on MacTac. I cut it out and place it onto the glass or I put the Mac tack on the glass and then cut it out afterwards. It depends on the pattern. Um, once it's on, I mask around the edges, put on my acid etch and it stays on for five minutes. And then I take it off and wash everything and voila. Isn't that lovely? And uh, of course, it's a large vase which has such an intricate looking pattern. It's kind of like treble clef and waterfalls and all sorts of things. It's just a... Uh, a whimsical thing. Mm -hmm. Very, very pretty. Let's have a look at some of your other pieces now. Here are some more pieces of the acid etching. Um, and on these glasses, what's really neat is the way they're, they're formed. The color is just on the bottom. And so once it's on its side, the color shows all the way through. This one, once again, is a pattern that I've cut out. These are really neat because they are a pattern that I pre-bought and, and then put on and, and all, they're far more intricate and, and finer than anything that gets done on this stuff. Moving down to here, I have a turbo carver with a diamond, with diamond tips and this is literally carved right into the glass on the back side. So the pattern gets, I put my pattern on and I set to and start working from the back side. This is how to brighten up your glassware for sure. It is. And once again, this set of four glasses is also engraved. And the, once the pattern goes on, you engrave it. And as you're doing it, you have to be wearing a mask and goggles because the glass can break. <laughs> Now, will you have all kinds of samples at the show and sale uh, like these? Some pieces there, yes. And do you do commission work? Yes, I have. I have done commission work, which was really, really pleasing, and 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 it was like, wow. <laughs> 
Lots of fun. Just stuff. <laughs> yes. Well, I think about oh, you know, family uh, crests and that sort of thing could be quite interesting for special occasions. Well, a, a young couple got engaged and they had mugs done with their initials and and the date on it. So that's wonderful to know. Now the other side of the bench, as we as we can say, is spent with calligraphy, which is such fine work and absolutely gorgeous. This piece will be in the show and sale on the May long weekend, correct? Yes. Yeah, it will. Tell us a little about your tools of the trade. Um, this is done with a, a, a pointed pen, and the writing is called Weaver Writing. Um, we had to do uh, a piece from a classical children's story, and so I chose this from, from the, uh, the Lion and the Mouse, mainly because it just works in life. No act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. I love that. Aesop's fables, I always remember, and uh, he, the little lion image is adorable with the mouse. It's a little mouse. Yeah. <laughs> We've got some other examples of your calligraphy here as well. And I do want to say, calligraphy to me seems very traditional, Pauline. So the script and uh, even a little old-fashioned, does that come from uh, certain volumes? Do you create some of it yourself? I've taken courses and then taking courses, um, but my writing doesn't always, in a sense, mirror exactly what I've been taught, because each person, once they get into something, their hand is a tiny little bit different, but um, I've taken five different types of, of writing. Pauline, you also work uh, in print. Yes, I really like doing prints because you can blur it and it still looks good, whereas painting, you got to be kind of right on, and yeah. I'm not necessarily right on. <laughs> Did you learn all this yourself, just from playing around? No, uh, these were a play dates. There's uh, several of us in the Casa Art Group that have play dates, and and we do something different every time. Oh, I love that idea. Tell us about the bird. That was my very very first print, and and it's done on mylar, and then you've colored it with with watercolors let it dry and put wet paper on top of it, rolled it, and that's what I got. And then for something completely different, an untitled work around the corner is a monoprint? It's a monoprint also, and it's done with an ink block rather than paints. Mm -hmm. And once again, it doesn't matter, you just put it on and let it happen. Right. Well, you get really creative and pushing into using very unusual mediums with this piece. Um, and that's marbling, actually, it's shaving cream marbling, and, and it's done, it's just a lot of fun. Shaving cream gets put onto a cookie sheet, and <laughs> acrylic paint gets daubed on, and you just spread it around, put down your paper and leave it for five minutes, and then take it off and scrape it off. And it's fascinating. So there's a certain amount of experimentation. Oh, there is. And I've done this with, with two or three different groups now, just of, of young people, and they've thoroughly enjoyed it. Excellent. And what have you learned along the way? That practice makes perfect. <laughs> and I'm still working at perfect. <laughs> you can enjoy a wide variety of artwork at the Casa Art Group annual show and sale. It happens on the long weekend in May, Friday from 6 until 9 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Upper Centennial Hall in Lake Cowichan. The Katza Art Group are always welcoming new people. You need to have absolutely no experience, and even if you have a little, you can bring that to the group. Everybody is really great about sharing, and we really felt this was inspiring. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, we love your story ideas. If you see anything at all in the Cowichan Valley that you think deserves some time on Go Island, please get a hold of us at Facebook, Twitter, or email. We'll see you next time, and thanks for watching. Women's clothing provided by Tulip Noir. Casual designer fashions. Men's wardrobe by DG Bremner & Co. Menswear and accessories. Hair services provided by Salon J.